Hey, what is up, everyone? Uh, Connor Mead here. Just coming straight from the blow-up mattress in my mommy's house. Because that's where we're doing stuff now. Uh, super excited about today. We uh, come in here, by the way, if you don't know about the Independent Comedy Club. We're just a small comedy club in Detroit. Uh, we work with Planet Ant. And uh, we're always trying to build and do better. Hey, Rafiq. Welcome back, everyone. This is so exciting. I'm so excited about this. Today we have Jenna Friedman, who is fucking killing it. She's producer, writer, stand-up. Uh, she does it all. Actress, uh, everything. She does everything. She has this awesome show on Adult Swim called uh, Soft Focus with Jenna Friedman. It's fucking hilarious. It's great. She's I mean, I worked with The Daily Show. She's worked with Dave Letterman. She's, she's done it all. She also has an awesome special called American Cunt, which I, I, love. I love that name. It's a great name. And, uh, all right, let's, let's bring her on. Let's do this thing. All right. With Jenna Friedman. Bum, bum, bum. Internet and stuff. All right. Hi. Hi, how's it going? Great. How are you doing? I'm okay. Uh, Good. Yeah. Hell yeah. So I guess I got to ask, how have you been adapting with, you know, lockdown? Have you been working a lot or just taking a break? Yeah, I feel very lucky to be in Los Angeles at the moment. Right. Um, trying to, you know, create, continue to create content under these circumstances. Uh, I've been cooking a lot. How are you doing? Oh, I've been doing great. I've been staying with my mom, which is great for the emotional support. <laughs> Exist existential crises are a lot easier if you can go hug your mom. So. <laughs> Not a lot of yeah. Say that about their moms. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's been awesome. She's watching right now. Oh, that's a beautiful background. Is this, is this your place? Yeah, we're we're. Uh, my boyfriend's actually from Detroit. Um, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, we. That's how I ended up uh, connecting to your comedy club. But yeah, uh, yeah, we're renting a place. It was like a, it's supposed to be a short term rental because he was about to go on tour and I was about to go on tour. And then right. Kind of ended up here which is cool um unless there's an earthquake then we're just we're just dead so fast right <laughs> which like the way 2020 is going you never know <laughs> man i mean that's awesome you got to stay in la because i guess because you're originally are you originally from new york mm -hmm. so yeah i guess it's a probably a lot, a lot more tight-knit very much more locked down yeah. really. if anyone is watching and you're from new york hang in there i i can't imagine how tough it must be my friends who are there are like they're. I think we've all gotten over like that first month of just disorientation, and now we're kind of yeah. to what life is like. But my friends in New York seem to be kind of in good spirits at the moment. So that's good. Yeah, I mean things are still going. I know a lot of people. So I just have so many questions. I've I've just watched us uh, soft focus, which is so great. So um, funny. It's such, oh, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, we're just everything. about to shoot the next episode in New York. Oh, yeah. So excited about And then, you know, this happened. But hopefully we'll get a version of it out before 2021. Maybe a lockdown version, but I don't know. Right, right. Yeah, I have so many questions about that. Like these, I, I don't know if it's a dumb question, but how do you get these guys on there to interview and everything? Do they know that it's a comedy show? Or are they just not part of the bit? Oh, oh here. I'm going to introduce you to the team. Oh, yay. Um, <laughs> every interview subject is different. John McAfee knew that I was a comedian. I don't think he, like, looked into it before I met him, but he was told that I was a comedian. And then mm -hmm. uh, did you see the frat guy segment or the segment with the gamers? I saw the, the, the sexual harassment in gamers, which, and the, the, the college one, and these guys, they seem oblivious to what's going on. So it's tricky. You know, we try to do it as ethically as we can, but also, and I found this out really when I worked at The Daily Show, when people kind of know that you're a comedian going in, their reactions are, like, less organic. So mm -hmm. we tell them it's like legally above board and like the contract and stuff, but we don't explicitly say like, we're a comedy show mm -hmm. with the frat guys. We said that we were like, we kind of, I talk about it in the piece, but we kind of said that we were like a partying, like drinking show or something. I don't know. <laughs> Just like lure them in with that. Yeah, <laughs> like there's Natty ice here. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, we don't, 
we don't take people out of context and like in that segment in particular one of the guys said such dumb stuff and we protected him and didn't actually we edited it out so that he didn't look right. like he sounded yeah well, <laughs> that's nice of you but, <laughs> but also oh how great would it be just to see it you know <laughs> But uh, so is a lot of like, so you like know what you're going to ask them. Is there a lot of like improv, improv, improv involved in the answer and these just ridiculous things and you have to react to it? Um, in the frat, well, so in the section with the frat guys, um, and if anyone's watching, you haven't seen it, it's all on YouTube. Um, but the whole premise of that was just to find a funny way into a serious topic, which was campus rape. And we gave guys sex dolls and we're like, you, ha you just like be responsible and cool with them and like treat them like you would some pass out freshman girl and whatever. Right. So we knew at the end that we were going to, I don't want to spoil it, but the thing at the end, we knew that was going to happen, but I didn't know who was going to be the one that we kind of fucked with in a nice, in a nice way. And then right. during production, one of them just kind of emerged as this, like, narc. And he's like, I feel like they're going to make take us out of context. And so, <laughs> right. They, they just, caught on eventually. Yeah, he was definitely <laughs> asking for it. No, he was such a good guy. I told them afterwards, and they were all cool. Um, one of them, I think, asked for, like, an internship later on or something. But, yeah, I mean, that one, you just kind of, as you're working with the characters, you kind of just see, like, oh, which one is taking it seriously? which one would be, like, the most upset. I feel like if I had done it to the other guys, they would have been like, I know you're joking. But that guy right. was, like, so earnest. And part of You can see the fear in his eyes. Yeah. I feel like when you, when you say, like, there's cum on this doll. <laughs> Our casting people are really, really good, too. They uh, really found the right mix of people. Right. Right. That's awesome. So, uh... I have a question. I don't know if you've heard about the uh, protests happening in Michigan. I know, like, Saturday Night Live talked about it. And, like, seeing this, all I can picture is, like, you in a hazmat suit out there just messing with them. I don't know. Do you have any opinions or things you'd like to say about it? You know, I've been trying to do this. It's tricky because you also want to make sure that your crew is safe. And we're at that. Mm -hmm. We're just, like, at a point where it's, like, hard to do. I've definitely done comedy in, like, scary situations where after the fact you're, like, wait, are we part of the problem? And so... I don't want to put anyone at risk for like a joke, but um, yeah, it's so the protests are so interesting and it's interesting that they're like protesting, but they're also wearing masks. It's like pick a side. Right. You know? But also a lot of them are not. <laughs> they're all out there hugging and having a great old time with their AK-47s. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, it's going to get worse. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, it's 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 hilarious. Like, uh, like I also I I have to say I'm so impressed. Like when you see these guys like kind of saying this dumb stuff and you just keep your cool and just have such like a witty comeback. I'm like, how do you just like keep that not like strangling these sometimes these idiots? <laughs> well, I think just from like I've been doing comedy for over a decade, and you get to a point where you just are so dead inside that it helps <laughs> your delivery. You know, right? Like, nothing can phase you. Yeah, you've heard it all. Develop that, like you know callous deadness yeah <laughs> so dead inside that's a good tip <laughs> yeah. let's get to that point uh i guess we always like to ask like what's your origin story where'd you start off at where was your first set i started off i went to college in chicago i was doing improv in college i wrote like this is very nerdy but i wrote a paper about improv and that's how i got into doing it and then oh, yeah. i loved it so much but it was so like political getting stage time and everything and I kind of gravitated towards stand-up because it was just this thing that you could like do anywhere and like unlike writing and there's such a long development process of stand-up you could just be like I have a show tonight and even if I don't have any jokes I'm going to go on stage and create something out of nothing and so it just felt like this thing that you could always have and do and yeah yeah, I always think because uh, like Planet Ant is a lot, it's improv and stand up. We kind of infiltrated with our little club back there. And uh, it's nice seeing, I feel like everyone should do both. Like you can get so much from both of them. And that's such, that's awesome. So, uh, so uh, did you start in New Jersey or New York? Or you said Chicago is where you started. And then did you move to New York like shortly after? Or? Yeah, I don't cool. think I ever would have done comedy if I were like near, in the same state as my mom. You know, like I don't know if right. I my mom, but we don't have like, she never encouraged it she was just so sad that when I 
when I like came out as an artist or whatever you call it. Because <laughs> you had a very uh, conservative family, didn't you? They're kind of conservative, and I don't know if this is funny, but she actually was like, I'd rather you be gay because at least that's something you can't control. And I'm like, I can still be gay. Like, you never All right. Um, it, she just was like, they were just so not, she's an accountant. She's not like art artsy. But I don't know. I love, yeah, I, I love performing in Chicago. I got the same vibe when I was at the club um, in Detroit just because it's like, I don't know, it's cool when you're around a community of people just doing it. What? Cam Stramek. He knew I was. Yeah. <laughs> Josh is in a band. I don't know if you know his band, Junior Junior. Um, I haven't heard of them. But... They're, they're a Detroit band. They used to be called Dale Earnhardt Junior Junior. But um, when I went to your club, it just reminded me of Chicago. It's like a really good energy, cool people making interesting stuff. I just, I don't know. I think it's tough like the more we do this we end up in like new york and everybody kind of gravitates to la which is like where comedians go to die and live um, right. but i it's a it's cool to have like a community of people kind of starting out together and creating stuff oh, yeah. without the pressure of like i don't know i love la is always weird because when you do a show there could be like people in the audience who are like industry and then they'll judge you if you do you know the idea that you can experiment and play is really important in comedy. Right. Right. You know, I, yeah, I totally feel that like everyone's always telling us like, what hub are you going to move to like New York or LA? And I'm like, I love the scene that we're building in Detroit and I'm planning on staying here a while yeah. you know, and really just work on it. Like, why not? It's so expensive to live there. So, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, origin story. Uh, so like, if you had to choose, though, I always like to ask this question. If you had to choose, is it New York or L.A.? My heart. Or Chicago. I love Chicago, but my Chicago is like never. I loved it. and I had a great time there. Um, my heart is in New York. New York City is just, I mean, it got to a point. I was telling a friend, like, it felt as I like, because I've been going back and forth, but um like a concept store that sold Instagrammable croissants op opened up like in my neighborhood next to like a housing project where people's electricity was turned off because the, they were like trying to get them at. And you're just like, right. not a sustainable city, like something's got to give. And so I, I don't know, it'll be interesting to kind of see how, what New York looks like after all of this. And, um, it's like such a traumatic event and the city is kind of going through such a scary time right now. Um, mm. But I, I think that the, the thing that I've always loved about New York is the people, it's people from all over the world. And it's so hard to live in New York that people who are there are just really passionate about what they do and you're in close quarters. So it really keeps you grounded. And for comedy and art, you're just always like moving and you're always inspired by other people. And so I think, the best work that I make is always when I'm in New York and running around. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I love New York. My like for sure that is kind of where I where my heart is. But I'm 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 getting accustomed to LA. The only funny thing about this whole quarantine is like it just feels like LA any other day. Like I'm actually <laughs> right more friends since the lot since the shelter in place. Just because we're all like we all have more time. But LA is kind of like normally a little bit more isolating and um it's all people in the same industry so you're kind of it's kind of it can, it can get boring at points if that makes sense right and i feel like it's probably more like competitive like there's probably less i don't know how the community is out there but i feel like like when i visited there people are kind of like pinning against each other like they don't want to talk to you if you're nobody type thing yeah, New York, maybe when you first start doing stand-up there it feels a little more cutthroat because it's just a harder lifestyle the thing i always felt like in la everybody's nice because the it's not it's like a bigger pond and you also like people you see people like at their career highs and then like go low again and everyone like you kind of can't get away with not being nice to people if that makes sense mm -hmm. um not like i try <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, I wish I could have been a bitch. No. Um, <laughs> right. But, yeah, no, I think, I, I honestly think the comedy community in New York and L.A. and Chicago, I've always, 
felt for the most part people are really cool. It's a group of people who are gravitating to this weird thing that's really hard to do. And even at the top of your game, you can be unfunny or you're, you know, you're always, you can always bomb. You're always kind of like working towards this thing that doesn't exist. And so I think it's very humbling. And I found that every kind of, every city I've done comedy in the community has been relatively like very warm. Even in LA, mm. I think once you get past, I think when you're first starting out, you come into contact with like all sorts of crazy people because there's like no barrier to entry. So I remember like, especially for like young women, when you're like coming onto a scene, there's always like some creepy dude in Chicago. Oh, yeah. So I started with uh, Best Selling and Cameron Esposito. We all started at the same time in Chicago. Love them. And one of the first people that ever put any of us on stage I don't want to say his name but he he changed his name because he was like he had been a, a registered sex offender no joke and he was like the only person booking young female comics at the time. oh what a cool inky dink yeah, so like we gave you, like, someone gave me a heads up and they're like yeah he's really cool but just like don't wear open toed shoes around him because you know? <laughs> that's your responsibility right yeah um, <laughs> But I do think it's, like, it is hard, I think, particularly, like, when you're new and you don't, like, you're not really plugged into the community and, and you're female to try to, like, find good people who aren't going to, like, take advantage of you or be creepy. I think that's, I don't know how I got on this topic, but, like. No, I mean, it's just the reality of comedy, you know, which I guess can kind of go in my next question. Like, what is, like, big advice you'd have for newer comics, like, getting into it? I think it's important to, you know, again, be kind because community that you start with and the community that you build you help each other you get each other jobs I think I remember like being so like oh how do I get an agent or a manager but most of the jobs almost every job I've ever gotten same with so many of my friends has been from your friends and and your community and then the work that you've already done um and then yeah I think like don't be afraid to fail maybe not on Twitter, but just like, <laughs> like don't don't do what I do on Twitter, which is just tweet bullshit and then. Get oh, I love it! I love that breaking news <laughs> thing when that actual newspaper actually glommed onto it. Let, can, thank you, because I was so upset. So, can I just talk about that? Really, it's so dumb. Oh, go for it. There, are people. I, I started reading obituaries from like people that I like respect and admired who were like it was like on our Twitter feed people dying of COVID and it's so it was so sad so I was like I just want to like spark joy and like you know throw a little wish fulfillment thing into the mix so I was like what if I say breaking news Stephen Miller has COVID what's the worst case scenario um people think he has it so that like he doesn't end up in the Oval Office pitching child prisons to Donald Trump like what's the worst case scenario if you know whatever. Right. and so people got upset about that but then like and so I deleted it. But then, like, three weeks later, his wife, I hope she's okay. I mean, I feel like just being married to him is so much worse than anything else. But um, she tested positive. Some pe then people were like, maybe Stephen has it. And maybe your tweet summoned it. And so then I was like, okay. <laughs> Manifestation, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I should just, like, put them all, like, you know, Trump, Mitch McConnell. Whatever. So you saw, I don't know if you saw it, but I started doing that. And then the right, the trolls got so mad at me. And then journalists were retweeting it. And it's like, you guys, I literally say, I'm a comedian and like, don't quote me in my bio. And you're just retweeting the stuff. And then I was like, you shouldn't be journalists. You should be fact checking. And then all the journalists were like, fuck you. And then there were like five dumb think pieces about something that was really stupid. And then I, and then I felt bad because I was like, in a way we are like contributing to like the right wing news cycle. Like all they want is like a, Daily, former Daily Show producer to be like spreading fake news but it's just like it's just a lot of noise and it's annoying and I wish it weren't that way and that I wish that people like you know I got suspended from Twitter I wish Trump would be suspended from Twitter for the fake news he spreads daily which is so silly like you can't like it's a joke it's a joke it's a silly and they're like oh no that's <laughs> fake news if it wasn't like I didn't that's the other thing people were like this isn't a joke and it's like yeah no it's not a punch. There's, it's not like a set up punchline joke. It's more of like a performance art of summoning mm. something into the world and like having people see that and then feel happy for just a second. It was a, it was dumb, but it's all Twitter's really dumb. So that's my advice. To you. Yeah. Like you don't need 
Twitter, I don't think anymore. And if you are going to go on Twitter, just like write your strongest jokes because people do, myself included, do, I do still hire people from their Twitter feeds. I hired a writer for this episode of Self Focus because I thought her tweets were really funny. Um, oh, yeah. so, you know, if you're going to tweet, just don't do what I do, tweet jokes. <laughs> well, I personally loved it. I thought it was a, this a roller coaster to <laughs> read about and <laughs> learn about. I thought it was so fun. Uh, I guess the next question, I have all these written down. Uh, as far as like, because you, you know, you're producing, writing, acting, doing all this stuff. Were you always planning on just going at everything in entertainment or did it just come naturally? Well, if you watch my acting, it doesn't come naturally. <laughs> 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 I so wouldn't. Um, I think that especially in comedy, which is so hard. You have to kind of do everything you can just to get your voice out there. So like, you know, improv I loved, but I wasn't able to make money doing improv. So I started doing stand up, and like, then I wasn't able to make money doing stand up. <laughs> then I started writing and then I ended up getting a writing job on a television show. And then, you know, I, I, that's kind of like the path that I took. And then I wanted to like make my own thing. So I just like put my own things on YouTube and it takes yeah. forever. And I think another, I, I think I thought going into it like, oh, if I could just get this, then I'll be fine. Or if I could just get this. And there's a lot of career insecurity in comedy. I think there's that in everything, especially in this moment where we're all like sheltered in place. But I think if you just like, I, I don't think you, you never, I don't think you ever, like if you have a day job and you're like, when do I leave my day job? I would just say, hold on to that job as long as you can write on the weekends or just squirrel away time to do your own stuff. Because I have personally found that if I'm stressed about money, it makes my creativity a lot harder. And right. so I think my friend wrote a book, Sarah Ben and Costa, like real artists have day jobs. And I think that like, you know, it's, it's hard, but it's hard at every level. So just kind of like, um, try to find the time to, to make the work that you are going to be proud of. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm, I feel like I'm like blabbering, but no, no, no. having a day job, you know, like it's, it's all part of it. It'll make you more creative because you're not, because you're not just like in a bubble. Right. Cause yeah, if you don't have like those regular day, you know, experiences, it can, yeah, stifle writing and stuff. If you're just always around comedians or doing comedy, yeah. and then also, I guess stuff like that. Own way don't count on other people to like give you opportunities. Um, I kind of started around the time that YouTube became a thing. And uh, I've just also seen it. I mean, soft focus came out of me having stuff already online that Adult Swim had seen and wanted to continue to develop with me. And I remember like my friend, uh, Abby and Alana, if you've seen Broad City, that came out of a web series that they just did on their own. So I yeah. think like it's, like more and more affordable like you can shoot something on your phone now so just kind of putting stuff out there that you find funny and then I think that's probably the best way to get to somewhere where you're where you're making like actual money doing it yeah 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 that's awesome yeah as, as I guess yeah with like especially nowadays it is all like YouTube and TikTok and stuff which I personally have had a hard time adapting to <laughs> but uh because just, just doing this like talking basically to your phone it's just so Ugh, like it's so like kind of strange but it is you know necessary and that's awesome that you captured that and show that like work like the work really pays off doing stuff like that it's so awesome um yeah i'm gonna see sorry i'm like not the interviewer usually johanna does this <laughs> oh thank you i was so nervous i'm like she's like worked with the interviewers oh i'm sorry what was that the person i've talked to besides josh and potato <laughs> Oh, well, awesome. <laughs> I hope I was more, uh, you know, entertaining than the dog, but no. Definitely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, uh, do you have anything you want to plug or anything like that or anything coming up? You know, I have a cooking show coming out like every other female comic and Padma. Um, I don't know if it's going to be good. I just got a little bit of money to make something and I was like carpe diem. And so, yeah, I think it's a, if you, it's called the Joy of Quarantine. Uh, we're donating some of the proceeds to the LA Regional Food Bank, so it's not totally tone deaf. Right. <laughs> no self focus, but it might be fun. Um, hopefully, we're doing another self focus. I don't know. 
I've been avoiding Zoom shows, so I don't really know what else to plug. Right. Wear masks. Yep, definitely. So I said, is this going to be like you and your uh, your partner cooking? Or are you going to have like maybe guests and masks there? Or? So we shot it all. It's my friend Bella directed it. I um, It's just me. Their, their recipes are like random. I was thinking, I didn't want to like culturally appropriate. So they're all like Ashkenazi Jewish random recipes of things that nobody will ever eat. And <laughs> uh, I made them all. Josh, my boyfriend is in it. But we, as a joke, just disguise his identity, because why not? And, right. um, yeah, uh, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I'm, we, I might be doing another show for adults when that isn't soft focus, but we have to figure out the details on that. You cool, know. cool, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm happy to see you're oh. still pushing out, you know, content and everything. This has been awesome. I'm again, a little bit shorter than 30 minutes, but I ran through my questions. So. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much. Have you, are you, so are you guys, do, are you doing live shows anytime soon? Or how are you, how, um, how are you guys, what are you guys thinking? How are you doing that? We've just been kind of playing it by ear. You know, we had to reschedule so many shows. We're just trying to do like the interviews here. Planet Ant has all kinds of, like they're doing like improv in like a Zoom oh. chat. Like they're doing all kinds of stuff. Make people not forget about us, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I love that space. And I think it's such an interesting time in terms of like live performance because I don't think Zoom comedy shows, it's just a... It, they're not bad. It's just a completely different art form in a way. Like, right. Like, playing with, like, TikTok. Um, but, yeah, I hope live performance, we can find a way to do it. Um, I know that, like, laughter spreads COVID, but do groans, you know? Like, right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, the hardest part is because like you want to do all this stuff, but so like like you can't read a room. You have no idea how it's going. So I've personally avoided all like the Zoom open mics and stuff. So I'm like, I don't know how this will go. I know. I have no desire to do that. But mm -hmm. hopefully, Planet Ant will be back up and running. You know, before the asteroid hits. Right. I thought this was supposed to happen in April. I think we're already clear. <laughs> Anyone watching, it's a great place. If you, I know my friend, I saw my friend Lisa pop up. She's awesome. Um, oh. If you're ever in Ham Tramic. Ham Tram. Ham Tramic. Ham Tramic. It's a great place. And if any comics are watching, definitely next time we can tour again in like 2045. Check right. Out. Oh, well, thank you so much. I love the kind words. This has been a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, thanks again for being with us. And I hope everything goes well. And I'm excited to see your new cooking show. And uh, yeah. yeah, I'm excited. Don't make that face. I'm excited. <laughs> cool. Nice to meet you. And stay safe out there. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. It was nice meeting you too. And uh, have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye. Boop. There we go. <laughs> Figuring it out. Jenna Friedman, everybody. That is the end of this little interview. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you want to support us at all, check us out at plantedant.com slash independent. We're to support Planted Ant. We're, we're going to try our hardest to make it through this thing. We're just a small little, little community that's just working our hardest to, you know, keep going and chugging along. Thank you all so much. I've been Connor Mead. Uh, we do this every single, basically every day, Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, please come back, check us out, give us a follow. Love you, night-night. <laughs>